Minecraft Battle Mode Online is currently hosting its largest and most server changing event to date. If you didn't already hear or see my previous video talking about the Battle Mode Online test fight event that's currently going on, I'll briefly summarize. The creator of Battle Mode Online and Project Lem, known as Emmy, uploaded a brand new video to our YouTube channel the other day announcing an event called the Test Fight. This would be a limited time event starting on the 13th of August and ending on the 20th, hosting multiple community made battle maps and allowing players to test them. Emmy's stated overall goal with this event was to test a new feature that she wants to eventually add to the Lem server, known as the Mod Loader, a mod that if working correctly would allow the community to upload and play their own custom battle maps whenever they like and would also introduce a multitude of other even more awesome features as well. With the event now coming to a close after its week long duration I wanted to not only archive all 14 of these amazing custom maps that were shared but also tell you about each one of them and how this event has gone from Emmy's own point of view so far. So welcome back ladies and gentlemen to what is yet again another brand new video on my channel. In case you are new around here and haven't been here before, my name is Catman Joe or CMJ and today as mentioned in the hook for the video, I'll be talking a little bit about the Battle Mode Online Mod Tools test flight that is sadly coming to a close later today and what I thought of each one of the custom battle maps uploaded by the Project Lem community. But first, let's talk about the event and how it's gone. The test flight event so far has been what could only be described as somewhat stressful but mainly extremely successful. The LEM server has had its second largest player numbers ever and Emmy has been able to once again due to the massive influx of players and community support on her Patreon upgrade the hardware for the server adding a fourth server for playing on LEM called Battle 4. However, she's currently waiting on her server host to have an open slot for the upgrade. These additional servers mean that instead of being unable to play on Battle Mode Online when the game fills up to 16 players, which believe it or not has been happening quite a lot, now you can just simply jump onto another server with fewer players, meaning even more people than ever before can play. However, it's not just the server that's seen a lot of growth this week, but also the community. Emmy's YouTube channel alone since we first covered Battle Mode Online has jumped from 170 subscribers to now almost 200, and our latest video announcing the test fight has also gained over 300 views, which I know to some might not seem all that impressive, but remember, this is only in the space of a single week. And it just doesn't stop there. The Legacy Edition minigame server has also seen some massive growth, gaining almost 100 new members in the past week also. So the question is, where did all this growth come from exactly? Was the test fight just that well received by the already existing members of the community and they shared it around? Was it my previous videos talking about Battle Mode Online or was it something entirely different? Well, although the test fight has been a massive success by itself and the pre-test fight LAM community has enjoyed the event, they weren't responsible for this huge influx of players. And although my two previous videos on Battle Mode Online were great and have done well, they haven't exactly gone in thousands upon thousands of views, so I wasn't responsible either. The person actually responsible for this massive influx of new players is actually a TikToker called EQ. Yeah. So four days ago, this fairly new TikTok creator released a TikTok called the best Minecraft server you never heard of, which showcased Battle Mode Online and guess what? that video popped off. As of me typing this script, that 26 second long TikTok has almost 150,000 views and over 18,500 likes, making it one of the biggest reasons why the server has been getting so many newcomers. So now that we've covered how the test fight has gone and where all the newcomers came from, it's time to talk about what is happening after the 20th. Are the community maps going to disappear forever? Will we ever see them again? Well, originally Emmy was going to end a test fight event and no longer host the custom battle maps anymore, but due to the massive influx of new players because of the event, content on YouTube, and now TikTok, Emmy has decided against that. Her focus on her own words has changed more to optimizing the server itself for a while, and she probably won't be able to test the mod tools again for some time, so she wants to have something available for the public. So she's now going to be making a dedicated server, most likely the future Battle 4 server, which we talked about earlier, into a server exclusively for testing mod tools, and hopefully for playing these and maybe more custom maps. Emmy has clarified that the server won't be called Battle 4, it will most likely be called something like Mod Tools Test Server, but it will be locked at an 8 player cap until she can get an upgrade from her server host. The reason Emmy also wants a dedicated server for mod tools testing is due to some complaints she's seen from players who are unhappy about these tests being run on the main server, which is somewhat understandable. I even personally saw some players disconnect when a custom map was going to win the map vote, as they just don't come to play on custom maps. So regardless, it's an awesome thing for the community and hopefully it means everyone will be happy. So moving on from how the test fight has gone so far and what will happen after the 20th, let's talk about the main subject of this video. I'm going to be sharing with you my opinions on all the 14 custom battle maps created by members of the LAM community for this event. Now I do want to say beforehand that these are simply going to be my opinions and thoughts, so please if any of the creators of these maps see this video, don't take anything I say personally. 
At the end of the video, I'll say which map was the best from all my experiences and why, but only after I've reviewed each one of the maps individually. My goal with this video is merely to give an honest review of the maps from my own experience, and whether that review is positive or negative doesn't change the level of respect I have for the individual creators of these maps. Starting off our list of custom maps we'll be going through, we are going to be beginning with this map called Lobby, created by Frizzo, and I think that's how you're meant to say their name. Lobby is described as follows. Why bother changing scenery for only a short battle? Lobby, if you can tell, is the 2017 minigames lobby or the new minigames lobby it depends on how you want to look at it the classic is the one before this i'm covering my build tutorial series but this is a new minigames lobby that has been converted into a battle map yeah my initial first impressions of the map weren't that great as it felt honestly just really really lazy it didn't have any new locations you could go to or access or introduce things that change how you normally play in the lobby traditionally the only thing it added that i liked was its description which even at that was just kind of lazy but also it was kind of funny but that's about the only thing i liked about this map one small thing that had been changed for the battle lobby was all the secret entrances including the dragon head area had been opened and there were chests placed all over the map and that that was really it from my experience on the map i stupidly jumped down into the old underground lobby and thankfully got a single kill on BB King Bowser before being wiped out by Master Eli YT, but after one time playing on this map, it just sadly didn't leave me wanting to play anymore. Have you ever wanted to fight in the dense woodland area without the fear of picking up ticks? Well, here's your chance. Cray by I'm Lighty MC, Forest is described as follows. A survival games like map where you can hide from your friends and find the only easter egg in the map. Unlike some of its contemporaries, Forest knows its place and keeps things incredibly simple. All players spawn around a massive tree and either have the option to try and grab loot from its base and risk being in close quarters with others, or run for protection in the massive dense forest surrounding the area. There are no houses, cabins, cafes or orphanages, there's nothing. It's just one big tree with multiple smaller trees surrounding it. Well, th that is sort of a lie. In fact, the easter egg mentioned in the description for the map is pretty cool. At one of the corners of the map, you can actually find a remake of the Tutorial World Abandoned Miner Shelter, which was a pretty nice addition. The map may seem bland and uninspired to some, which you could say there's an argument to be made for, but I honestly got the vibe of an old school PvP map you'd see Java players playing back in the early 2010s, which kind of made it stand out to me. After playing some of the other maps, Forest was a welcomed addition. The ability to explore and loot without having to worry about someone attacking you from above, below, to your right, to your left, in front of you, behind you. The whole shebang made it a welcome pause in the quick based smaller maps I'd recently played and although its premise is incredibly simple, the map could at times be a little hard to navigate and whatnot, it was still really fun and I'd recommend it to anyone. The second map to be created by Frizzle, Eye of the Storm, shows to be truly his best work. Described as follows, Ivor went rogue again and the world is menaced by his creation. Will you be able to deal the finishing blow to end all this? Now, from personally playing on this map, I could not tell you who Ivor is. Is that some god, a banished demon, or simply a distant relative? I, I honestly would not know, but thankfully before recording the audio for this video, Emmy actually had to read through my script and clarified that Ivor is actually based on a Minecraft story mode character, and since this map is based around the weather storm from Minecraft story mode, it makes a little more sense, but I didn't get it at first since I haven't played Minecraft story mode, so just to clarify. What I do know, however, is that this map was really fun and absolutely nerve-wracking to play on. You spawn in the eye of the storm just across on the center chest, however, you have to be careful as your first step can very easily be your last, as the area surrounding the chest has a massive hole leading down into the empty abyss. The number of players I saw instantly at the beginning get yeeted out of the map because of this massive hole right around the chest was just brilliant. However, it did make some people really, really, really salty. If you manage to survive the first dash to Gaia so your chances of dying to something non-player related is thankfully pretty low. The rest of the map acts like more of a deep twisted maze of tunnels that connects with each other, making traversing the map at times incredibly confusing. Going down certain tunnels can be what gets you killed or what keeps you alive, making this map both unique and terrifyingly confusing. Have you ever wanted to fight people while also dangling hundreds of blocks high in the sky? Well, Skyward is the map for you. Or it was before Emmy pulled it down from the custom map list due to a gameplay issue, but thankfully, I got to play it beforehand. Created by Emmy here, not to be confused with the owner of the server Emmy herself, Skyward is described as follows. The map got corrupted. Chunks of the world are flying everywhere. Explore, play, and fight with your friends on this crazy mix of flying islands and familiar builds. Now, playing on Skyward for me was very brief. Uh, I almost instantly got slapped to death by players, and when I did get stuck on a little floating island like an idiot fighting these three other players, I eventually got killed by the player hit down, so I sadly didn't really get to explore this map much, which was a shame, but it was fun just to watch others play it. The map felt confusingly fun to play, but incredibly difficult to manage 
Master. It's the type of map I feel you need to play multiple times before you really get good at it. With its multiple layers, high advantage points, and capable locations, this map really just rewards those who are willing to risk it all in the chance of winning. It might look easy to do, but getting around this map is nothing less than a true test of one's parkour skills and confidence in themselves. Final Destination takes the quote fighting to the end literally by sticking a group of players on the end island and letting them battle to the death. Created by Frizzle and Steve Poland, Final Destination is described as follows. You are left stranded on an otherworldly floating island once inhabited by a legendary dragon. Will you survive to the harsh terrain and vanquish all your foes? Question mark. Now I'm not too sure if I was playing on the small version of this map or if there was even a large version at all. I'm going to presume it was just a small version, but this map really does truly feel like it was only created for a small group as opposed to a full party of 16 players. With its diameter only being around 150 blocks wide by 150 blocks long, it makes this already cramped setting feel even more pressured for room. Which I'm sure to some sounds fabulous, but throughout my short experience on the map, I had to basically hide non-stop due to the fact going anywhere near the center of the island almost certainly meant death. It's a cool premise undoubtedly, but I just can't help but feel like it could have been so much more if the creators just had a little bit more time to play with this map. It's my favorite thing to have ongoing in my survival worlds, and you already know I was hyped to test this map. Created by It's Cool Guy 900, construction is described as follows. Face off your opponents in an abandoned construction site. Will you be the victor and finish building the site? Ignoring the weirdly wordy map description for a moment because how does one finish the battle and then build the site? That Like I don't really get what cool guy meant by that but much love to him. Of all the maps I was going to test in this review, none quite had my attention like construction did. Maybe it was because of the city vibe or perhaps something else, but construction was just one of my favorite maps I played throughout the entire test fight event. On the surface, construction is a stunning map in and of itself, with few camping spots but an open battlefield to attack anyone nearby. But where it truly shines as one of the coolest maps is with its underground sewer system. Accessible via multiple different points, the construction sewer system is like a web waiting to trap naive players. And what I mean by that is when unflooded, the sewer is easily traversable, but when it is flooded, that totally changes everything. Suddenly you go from being able to run around or away quickly to only being able to slowly crawl your way through making you an easy target for bow wielding players. After playing this map, it again would be one of the maps I would highly suggest you play because it is just such an incredible map that is really, really, really fun. The fourth and final map created by Frizzle Pari Beach is described as follows. You are on this odd abandoned beach said to have been ready by pirates to battle with your friends. Can you come victorious on this tropical beach with the remnants of the pirate's treasure? Pari Beach, in my opinion, is a really awesome and unique concept with a description that actually sounds really cool. The premise of you using the pirate's treasure to fight with your friends works on such a great level, it's actually brilliant. Now I did play this map and I 100% enjoyed myself, but due to it being created for smaller player numbers, sadly my experience on this beautiful beach was slightly tainted by the vast amount of players patrolling at sandy beaches. As opposed to having a smaller group of 8 or under, which is the traditional size that you have for playing on this map, we had basically a full game and Emmy who was playing when we went on this map even said Party Beach is a bit mm, small for this player count, I'm gonna know. So yeah, it was a tightly packed game to say the least. But regardless of the player numbers, depending on where you were, whether it's in the Tiki Hut, Tower, or multiple caves around the beach, you can either be heading away, taking a moment to reorganize your inventory, or just waiting to pounce on any unsuspecting player who happens to walk by. I really wish I had gotten to play more of this map, as it was not only a great battle map, but also a really lovely map in general. If you're a fellow gamer who has been playing since before the 2010s, the name High Rise should immediately and I mean immediately bring one god tier map to mind, which is High Rise from NW2. Giving your map a name like that does set the bar incredibly high for what players expect, and in this case, the map wasn't even close to getting over it. Before even trying the Battle Mode Online High Rise, I was excited. Anything even remotely similar to the map like High Rise from NW2 was instantly got to be in my top 5 list. However, this high rise was different. Created by the users XM Bosi and Min3 Master, this high rise feels fun for sure, but also slightly cheap. It just it just feels very, very, very cheap to be honest. It also doesn't have a description, which I've got to say kind of sucks, as it helps you feel a little bit more immersed when playing on these maps or loading into them. Using a small version of the classic battle map Invasion and changing a few things, the creators tried to take Invasion's already existing premise of spawning on the rooftops of buildings and recycle it to make what I do hope was a nod to high rise from NW2 
but they just didn't do enough to make this bootleg high rise feel like a different map. The first time I played on this map, I genuinely couldn't tell if it was a custom map or just invasion but on small. Sure there weren't any crashed or flying saucers in the sky and the buildings weren't on fire and had been repaired, but you just don't immediately look at that. You just look at what is in front of you or around you, which in this case was still just so incredibly similar to Invasion I could barely tell the difference. Like hey ho, I understand that creating a custom battle map with such a short amount of time obviously must be challenging, but come on guys. This map still even uses the same texture pack as Invasion, which just adds to the similarities and confusion. The sad part is I feel like the creators had a solid idea recycling the Invasion map, but just should have added some new buildings or a different texture pack and it would have been brilliant. I definitely give this map another goal though, as it was fun to play, but the question I had to keep asking myself Self was, is that because this is high rise or because it's just invasion? If you like maps like Shrunk and the feeling of an old custom murder mystery map from back in the Legacy Console Edition era, you'll love Studio. Created by the user Line 8 Cake, Studio is described as follows. Lights, camera, action. It's time to explore this giant film studio where you're being filmed for the next fight scene. So this is how cartoons are made, question mark. Although it was supposed to be played in a cartoon texture pack but couldn't due to the mod loader not knowing how to load it, Studio still looked incredible even in the replacement plastic texture pack. Studio had been a map that had been teased since Emmy's announcement video for the test fight had been released and although we had only seen some small snippets of footage from it, I was personally dying to try the map for myself and I can't say I was disappointed. This map looked like one of the most polished and original battle maps I'd be made for this event and what was shocking was while I was running around trying to find loot and just overall explore, I couldn't help but continue to think that this map could have been passed off as an unreleased 4G Studios battle map. It's incredible attention to detail, multiple different camping spots and smart premise made a standalone map that I'd happily replay any day and I'm honestly excited to see it with its correct texture pack and its full release at some point in the future. If you're a fan of the classic battle map Cove, it'll be no surprise that Nether Cove is a map that you'll truly enjoy. Created by UMFD underscore zero, Nether Cove is described as follows. The nether has invaded its way into cove, can you survive the infected terrain? Question mark. As beautiful as it is, it's a semi nether themed conversion of cove that feels somewhat incomplete. On either side of the cove, you'll see the netherwood has slowly crept its way into the map, infecting both the skull of the cove, one of the key points within the map, and finally the massive pirate ship on the other side. On the skull side, you'll notice the crimson wood has replaced the oak that once was there, and the water that flowed down from the mouth of the skull, allowing you to quickly get up to the higher end of the map, has turned to lava. The simple change alone makes playing on nether cove different from its original version, as it removes one of the key ways to quickly ascend to the higher areas of the map, while also adding an increased chance of death due to the lava at its base. However, the reason why I mention it feels somewhat incomplete is that if we switch sides to the massive pirate ship, what do you see? A warped wood variant of the massive pirate ship, which does look insanely beautiful, but with water surrounding it. I think something that would have really helped make this map more fascinating and set it apart from its original version would have simply been the replacement of all the water with lava and all the wood or at least most of it with nether wood. Can you imagine how many more different paths would need to be taken and how much more on the edge players would be if all around them was the constant fear of falling into lava? It would be insane. Now I do know the creator had changed some of the wood that was oak or spruce to birch, which I can imagine must have taken some time, but my only question is, why? Why change the wood from oak to spruce or oak or spruce to birch? I, I don't fully get the logic in that part. The nether infesting both sides and changing the wood from oak or spruce to crimson or warped, sure that makes quite a bit of sense, but oak or spruce to birch, just why? It just doesn't make any sense to me. Next, we've got a map that's hard not to love, Airsoft Castle. It's not only an amazing battle map, but also a genuinely interesting setting to explore. Created by the OP Warrior 208, G Sharp underscore, the God Goalie 031, and the Fireboy 029, Airsoft Castle is described as follows. An old medieval themed minigame with a castle, village and field made by me and some friends pointed from Bedrock Edition to Leb. This probably was a map I actually survived the longest on due to its massive size and plenty of room to explore. Unlike all of the other maps excluding forest, campsite and studio, this map had plenty of room to explore and find loot without rubbing shoulders with other players. When I went into the village, I swear my jaw just dropped. There was like something, I don't know, maybe 20 houses, something like 20 houses you could just explore, loot or hide in which was just awesome 
awesome. And that was just the village. There was also this massive castle, which was just huge and had dozens of rooms to loot and explore. Then there was a massive open wheat field with a windmill on it, which I actually saw Emmy just flocking in at one point and so much more. I can't speak highly enough of this map. It was so incredible to play on and I had so much actually surviving on it for a little while. I'd recommend this map to anyone and everyone as it just hits so many marks for being great and also fair. If you go in the woods today, you're sure to find a surprise. It probably would have been a song, but a sortie to forest. I can't do the rest of the chorus, but hey ho, here we are. Cray by a name that when pronounced sounds like you're trying to cast the spell. Ellis is Ellis, I think, or Alis is Ellis, it's hard to pronounce. Campsite is described as follows. At the campsite in the mountains, it seems that battles are sometimes fought by the campers who visited. Join us in this battle and stand at the top of the campers. Straight off the bat, Campsite Goes Down is undoubtedly one of the most beautiful maps in this entire test fight event. With its unique premise and beautiful surrounding landscapes, it makes not only fighting in this arena enjoyable but also interesting. I found myself just wanting to explore deep into the woods or down some of the many tunnels around the map, however sadly couldn't due to the barriers stopping me. I'd have loved to have seen a large plus version of this map with more accessible areas and perhaps abandoned RVs in the dense woodland or abandoned tents with extinguished campfires and loot inside them. Additionally, the opportunity for a night version of this map are also really interesting. Imagine the premise of having it be pitch dark and players having to hunt each other with minimal light coverage. Perhaps some distant light campfires to help you find camps and see what is around. All just ideas, but Campsite is a map I definitely want to play again. If peace and serenity is something you'd be hoping to find in this lovely Chinese village, you'd be great greatly mistaken. Cray by Elodorus, Chinese village is described as follows. Defeat your opponents in this not so peaceful village. You better leave the villagers alone though. Going into this map, I actually wasn't really fully sure what I was really expecting. I, I thought I was just going to be playing some ripped version of the Chinese mythology battle map that had been slightly adjusted or something else, but I was pleasantly surprised that wasn't the case. This gorgeous map is not only huge and has plenty of places to hide and camp, but it is also on a genuine level a really fun map to play on. When I played the map, there was only four of us, so I guess that maybe explains why it wasn't as chaotic as some of the other smaller maps I played, but it was just complete fun. Unlike in the previous recordings, I wasn't playing with my Xbox 360 controller either, but it still felt incredibly enjoyable, and this was at 8 in the morning after being busy all day working on videos, then streaming for 6 hours, which hopefully tells you something. I really recommend this map to everyone who is potentially going to try custom maps, as this was a great example of a well-made map. Remember how I told you Party Beach was the fourth and final map created by Frizzo? Well, I lied. The fifth and final map created by Frizzo, the Skeld, is described as follows. Shapeshifter parasites have invaded your spaceship and replaced the entire crew you are with. Be wary of everyone and try to kill them all to survive. Although this map is more of a joke and a meme as a remake of the Among Us map, The Skeld, it is also ironically, and I mean this, the best map created by Frizio out of all his other work. And I mean that. Although I loved Eye of the Storm for both its uniqueness and terrifyingly confusing design, the skill just is so damn good. From its multiple rooms to hidden vents that allow you to be able to go beneath the players and into the other rooms, the skill just hits different. I'm very thankful and proud to say that the only map I got a single win on and done decently in was the skill. So GG Mr. Frizzo. So that's it. 14 unique custom maps created by multiple different people for the Minecraft Battle Mode Online test fight event. I have got to say, once again, this was an absolute treat to be involved with. Although some of the maps didn't quite hit the spot for me, I still enjoyed at least trying them, and I hope that all the creators found my reviews and feedback interesting, to say the least. The best map for me is somewhat tied between three really good maps, and each of them has its own reasons for being my favourite. The first has got to be Construction. It's one of the few maps that had both a small and large version of it, but the map's entire premise felt really fun to play, and although outside of the battlefield looked a little bland, the three different levels of height you could fight at being on the ground level, underground in the sewer systems, or above on the under construction building really added some awesome diversity to the map, making it, in my opinion, the most diverse map in regards to strategic choices in the entire test fight event. The second map naturally has got to be Studio. From its unique premise to memorable design, Studio really stuck out to me as one of the only maps that truly recaptured the 4G Studios battle mode map feeling. It was not only fully flushed out in terms of design and set pieces with everything looking absolutely gorgeous, but also in terms of its multiple battle locations. Making it so players could fight above on the massive zombie that was on fire or make a last second dash into the long dark corridors behind certain sets gave this map a similar feeling to maps like Shrunk where you are small and everything else is large but it was still very unique, which was just amazing. The third and final map had to be Campsite. It was just so beautiful in terms of scenery that I just could not look past it. 
The map itself was incredible, from the spawn being in the car park to the long open roads, but the thing that made it one of the best maps in the test fight was its multiple different locations and freedom to explore. Out of all the maps in the test fight event, Campsite holds the number one spot for being the most beautiful, and I think if the creator had a little bit more time, they could have really polished this map even more and made it even more incredible. As a bonus map that I wasn't going to add until after I played it because it was actually the last map that I tested for this entire video, the Skeld has got to be my bonus, kind of number four on this entire thing, as not only an amazing map, but also an amazing and incredible example of the creator Frizzle's hard work and determination. Out of all of the 14 maps I reviewed, he personally created for himself and co-created a fifth, which is just insane. From Lobby all the way to Skeld, it's just abundantly clear that this guy is not only a talented map creator with some really unique ideas, but also someone who can always improve and keep going forward. So yeah, those are my top picks out of all 14 of the Battle Mode Online Test Fight Event custom maps. Before the video ends, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on which map was your personal favorite if you played on the server during the test fight, or from my video, which map you thought looked the most appealing. Before I end, I've got to say a big thank you to the lovely people involved with Project Lamb, including the creator herself, Emmy, and the wonderful battle mode online community when i was recording all the footage you've seen here today i had nothing less than an absolute blast everyone was polite kind and even willing to help me beat the veto system so i could jump into maps i hadn't already tried on the custom map list so thank you to every one of them if you want to join the fun the several ip and discord will be linked below along with the creator emmy's youtube channel so please be sure to check them all out and show them some love so going off script here for a minute because i actually didn't write a script for this section of the video and this is actually a new part that i just kind of added in just to say this before for the very 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 end of the video in the actual plays um i really do want to apologize for the huge delay in the release of this video this video initially was actually meant to come out on thursday the 18th uh, of august of course uh, meaning it would have came out two days before the end of the test fight event hence how some of the script was actually written as if it was just before the event ended but then due to me continuously working on the script and needing to test all the maps and stuff and get all the footage and all that kind of stuff all perfected it took me until really the, the 20th itself like i was up at 8 a.m on the 20th um, it was it was the 20th obviously of August the day that the test fight was ending I was awake on or awake at 8 a.m. Uh, playing on the actual server for the last day of its event being you know running of course uh, getting the last footage of the two new maps um, obviously the, the Chinese village and of course as well the Skeld because those had been added a little bit late and that kind of made making this entire video a little bit more difficult as well because trying to make a video when the entire project itself is continuously being updated and new things are being added it made kind of nailing down what was going on incredibly difficult um, and as opposed to the video getting released on that Saturday the 20th or on the 21st that Sunday Sadly, it just couldn't because I needed more time to edit the video, to polish the video, and to keep making it better as well, obviously, regarding in regards to the script and also in regards to getting the footage and when all edited correctly. Um, so I do apologize for the huge delay with the release of this video, but I hope that you all enjoyed it. And I hope that the Project Lamb community can understand and Emmy herself can understand. It was something that I would rather have not rushed, and I'm glad I didn't because it made it as good a video as it is, of course. So I hope you all enjoyed it. I will say the next Lamb video that I make or Battle Mono Lamb video that I make will be much, much, much shorter than this, I can assure you. Uh, this video ended up being a lot longer than what I initially expected it to be. Right now, the footage alone, just the actual recording footage, the audio, is over an hour and 30 minutes long. So I'm going to have a hell of a time editing this, but it was hell of a hell of a lot of fun making this video and doing this project. Probably one of the best videos I've made since my return to making content. So thank you all so much for that. And yeah, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching it. If you did go to enjoy this video and find it interesting or really funny, please share it with your friends and family. Drop it a like. And if you have any subjects or topics you'd like me to cover in a future video, leave a comment letting me know what they are also please be sure to subscribe and turn the notification bell to stay notified when i release any new videos and hopefully i'll see you peeps later in the next one